Welcome to another Let's Get Heavy interview. If this is your first time here, I am Beardwell Baggins and I hail from The Toon in Newcastle. Hope you're well, well. This is episode 22 and I'm very excited because uh, we have Trend Kill, who are from my neck of the woods. <clears throat> 2024, I wanted to make a point to have these guys on. Uh, I'm a big, big fan. Everything about them just hit ticks all the right boxes for me absolutely unreal band um if you were it get heavy fest you would have seen them live and in person if not you can head over to our youtube channel and you can watch their set live from get heavy fest and what a performance it was so without further ado guys let's uh let's get these lovely folks on because at the end of the day we're here to see them not me are you ready to meet the lads no. Let's uh, let's unmute and let's uh, switch our. You can probably all hear them, but lads, you are now live. Hello, Trendkill. How are you staying? No, then. How are you, all right, dude. Ah, welcome. Thank you very much for uh, agreeing to do this, taking time out of your your busy schedules, mm -hmm. etc. I know twenty twenty four is looking to be a busy year for Trendkill. Um, but I like to start off with a bit of backstory, just for anyone who's watching who doesn't know who Trendkill is. So come we'll start we'll start from the beginning. Can you tell us how Trend Kill started as a band? Oh back back to the very beginning. Well to be fair, let's let's hands on, let's do an introduction. Who have we got? We've got we've got Alistair on lead vocals, we've got Johnny on guitars, Jordan on the drums, and of course Tibble. <laughs> oh, hands on, I'm getting that one. Jordan's on bass, sorry, yeah, Cor Jordan. Corey's on. <laughs> we, you could swap swap a run if he's want. I'm, I'm just here for a laugh. I think you should. Do you, ever, you ever thought we'd do that? Just swap a run. Alice, you jump on the drums or something, and Johnny take up singing. Johnny take up bass or something. Again. <laughs> just for one. Sounds oh, good to me. Corey's yeah. just not here. We're, <laughs> we're all as good as each other. <laughs> so yes, I apologise. Corey is on the drums, folks, and Jordan is on the bass. So I do apologise there, lads. <laughs> so yes, let's let's start up again. So can you tell us how Trend Kill started as a band? Uh, well, to be honest, it started when me and Johnny were in school. About, uh, I don't know. It was like 10 years ago, maybe? Year nine. Year nine. I don't know when that is. I, I don't know. A, a, a while back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, well, I guess at the very beginning, of, like, so Corey, um, he, he like, we like, sort of grew up together. He went to a different school and then he, someone showed him how to fret a note on a guitar and he, and then he, uh, showed me how to fret a note on a guitar and then, yeah, it's led, it's led to this. Yeah. Kit. One thing led to another and then we just had, we just started gigging and writing and then, uh, we had like a few lineup changes over the years and then we finally met Ali during COVID. And then uh, we met Tipple, and now we're here. Thought this will do. <laughs> yeah, this is the best, we, Johnny. This is the best we can do after ten years. Nice. <laughs> yeah, well played. Nice. So, you, Ali, you weren't the original singer, is that correct? That's right, mate. Yeah. All right. So, um, who was who was in your place before yourself? Was it uh, Elliot? I never, Elliot. I never met them, but um... oh, Elliot, Chariot, Elliot. Um, yeah, it was uh, so the original like the lineup where we did Bloodstock and stuff. It was uh, me, Corey, Isaac, and uh, Isaac Edwards and Chariot Bartram. Um, and then lockdown hit, and yeah, things just panned out the way they did. And we, we were looking for a singer, and uh, Mira Ali uh, joined our forces, and now we now he's now we we do stuff. So tell me about how did you discover Ali? How did we discover what? Sorry. How did you discover messages on Facebook? Oh, I, I, I was, I was um, looking for like a singer for us, 
and uh, I discovered like a Facebook video of Ali in a Pantera cover band, and I was like, "Oh, what the fuck!" I was like, "I need, to, I need to find who this man is." And then uh, I messaged Johnny saying, "Should we contact him?" And I then, don't know how you found my address, like. <laughs> and then I've been, I followed him for about six months. You, you want to join? You want to join a better Pantera cover band? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. Man. You're gonna get paid significantly less as well. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So, uh, obviously, as you've all stated, that you're a, a massive Pantera fans, obviously, which I absolutely love. Um, I, I take it as that where the name Trenkill comes from as well. Oh, actually, I have the sauce of Trenkill. Oh, what is it? Literally like a, like a, a is it literally a bottle of sauce? He could be pulling no, 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 anything out of Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried. We, we 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 just took a picture of that and then like put it on Facebook, <laughs> and, that was and that was it. Just that's how it just stuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was just it. <laughs> where did that sticker come from, John? Yes, where did this? Yeah, it's, like, it's actually the, the fan, it's on the dime bag guitar, the camouflage. Like, it's a washburn. Like, All oh, right, um, right. It's just too heavy to do anything with. Fair enough. Yeah. I wasn't sure because uh, Pantera. I've not got an album called Southern Trend Kill. Pantera. It's Southern Trend yeah, Kill. Yeah, yeah. That's where, I, that's where I personally thought it came from, but uh, obviously not. It's come from just a sticker. It, 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 that, that's 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 like pretty much it. But then we then I got this and then it had that on it. So we're like, there, there we go. There's an M. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's stuck. Um. So let's talk. That was, that was oh. Our old logo. That was that's all it was. It was just a picture of that would cut out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised but you know <laughs> we're pretty primitive in our area so how much how much did it take for how much convincing did it take Alistair to, to join try and kill or was it pretty much a... to, to be honest not very much <laughs> um, I remember Corey sent us over like a Dropbox folder with some uh like guitar tracks um actually had you record had you <clears throat> fully recorded it you had hadn't you you'd recorded like a tune hadn't you we'd done and, it we'd um, done a tune and then i sent you the tune to see like what you do with it or two no it's two tunes yeah that was right and um it ended up being uh, one was obsession, our first it? single that we released was yeah but the other one was obsession wasn't it yeah yeah then we found you every night crying for about a month until you joined <laughs> But yeah, no, but I basically just recorded um, some vocals because um, I remember thinking it, that like that song in particular had like a bit of a Megadeth vibe to it. Um, and I really like Megadeth. They're probably one of my favorite bands. <clears throat> um, but then I could hear like a bit of Pantera creeping through as well. So um, I remember just recording some vocals at home, sending it over and we were pretty happy with it. And then I think I ended up being the first two singles that were that we did struck from existence and uh obsession nice uh, you didn't do a actual release with elliot then did you yeah we, we had a yeah, um, black moon ep uh, didn't we? we didn't we done our first ep one and uh black moon ep with elliot um but to to be fair we we're in college at the time in uni so it's just like you do a release but you can just release to no one you know you don't really know what you're doing with it Fair enough. Because uh, I was going to say, looking through the Spotify, it's, you haven't released it on Spotify or anything, has? It used to be on there, but we took it off when Yeah. You took it off when Ali joins, that right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we got a few releases under our belt because it just like, it was such a contrast to the point where it obviously looked a different band. I mean, it's the same sort of thing. It was just bad production. And uh, I mean, the songs were still decent. I would say the songs were still, were still decent. Though. The yeah, songs were good, I thought, to be fair. But, uh, uh, completely different sound, though. Do you still play any of them live? Oh, we haven't. We haven't, no. from, we haven't played "Struck from Existence" for a while no. either. No. I never learned them. <laughs> you never learned them before your time, man. Eh? Learn any of the songs anyway? You stupid. No, fuck. true. I didn't know the ones I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I know you literally, you literally put, stitched us up at a gig when we put when you played "Obsession." You didn't know it. <laughs> uh, I, I had a monitor mix, but it was just bass. <laughs> So, like, through the obsession solo section. <laughs> 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 it was just people going, boink, boink. 
Point, 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 point. It's the most <laughs> off-putting thing I've ever heard in my life. I think I'd had too many beers and I just fucking forgot what notes I should be playing. And I just picked all the wrong ones. <laughs> it's just four chords over and over again. Yeah, but uh, I didn't know the do that. that I didn't hit. I walked walk the whole fucking fretboard at that point. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> So let's talk about the current EP, Dissociate, which was released almost a year ago now. Um, yeah, un- unreal how quick time is flying. Uh, what's the inspiration behind this EP, and how did the recording and writing process unfold? We didn't really have a. It doesn't really have that much of a theme as the EP. Um, it was more just like four different songs that had like different topics, really. Like so um dissociate was sort of about someone with like disassociative personality disorder um a little bit like split personality disorder um what else for it was berserker that was a bit of a i played a lot of uh assassin's creed valhalla nice so i was on a bit of a viking hype so we uh, that's that's berserker erasure was about vladimir putin being a little bitch um well said well said what, what's what's the what what's the other song on it i can't oh, even covenant. think now Co- covenant and that's about fucking halo, halo. The UFO, uh, the UFO. Yeah. what yeah. halo hasn't as in the game yeah halo yeah yeah game. oh nice and i remember some, someone read um wrote like an article about it and they were proper buzzing over ridley scott and alien and i was like well you've just you just missed missed the fucking mark there i need to be more specific <laughs> Um, but the songwriting process was bit, about Halo. It was a bit different though, wasn't it? Because we previously it was either like Johnny completely wrote a song or I completely wrote a song. Um, in particularly for like, just uh, you wrote Covenant, I wrote Berserker, and then for Dissociate and Erasure, it was like the first tunes we wrote like in the practice room together properly. I would say where it was more of like all four were kind of contributing um and i think since we've started writing more like that we've started to kind of get our own sound a bit more instead of it sort of sounding a little bit more similar to maybe other bands yeah or at least we're trying to anyway yeah but but yeah for that, that's probably the main difference these prefer to to record and jam in a group or because like a lot of bands just now they'll record online send it back and forth to each other uh, I do feel as if that kind of art is kind of gone, if you know what I mean, where bands get together and record together. Yeah. We probably do both, don't we? We like, do a bit of both. Kind of like get an idea, like, in the group. <laughs> yeah, we tend to, uh, we'll go down, kind of we'll go down while Corey's recording his drums. And then for, I think for Dissociate, Johnny came here, didn't he? Like, yeah, we all came here. We normally send the demos back and forth to each other and then we together yeah. when we record them or when we're like developing them. The main mm-hmm. idea usually comes in the practice room first and then you might fuck around with it at home a little bit and then send it over to me and then I'll fuck around with it, send it a tipple. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit of both, to be honest. You can push each other, though, in a group setting. Do you know what I mean? You, that's the way I say it. Is yeah. You can push each other, make it that way each is uh, achieving better potentials than what you can actually do, do you know what I mean? So that's why I really personally prefer that art of bands getting together and recording as a full band as do I know some people can't it can't be helped because a lot of bands live so far away from each other, do you know what I mean? But uh, yourselves who are in reg- pretty much in driving distance of each other, I would have thought it must be fairly Near-ish. easy. Yeah. yeah. They're still they're still Mackums, but <laughs> but yeah well, far away. it's it's not their fault it's not their fault Alistair it's, it's, it's just one of them things it's just one of them things I'll, I'll, I'll stop bringing it up I'll stop bringing there's uh, Nenny is a, a uh, Sunderland fan do you yeah bear, bear in mind that the answer to that question will hinge on me being in this band <laughs> Should I go and put my Sutherland shirt on? <laughs> you, got a, you don't have a Sutherland shirt, do you? We're from Borough, so you got no time. Oh, God. It's Shredcar. Like, that's where we get the, the licks from. It's, we come from a town called Shredcar. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't going to mention, you know, the, the three the three nil whooping the other week, of course. 
But uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't really watch football. But Borough, Borough would cut neither neither really neither really do, really do well. But the on your side, Borough will have you. I'm not really a football oh, fan yeah, myself, anyway, so. to be honest with you. But uh, d- you know, when the Sunderland gets beat, it's, it's always a good day. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, so you've also released a couple of additional singles over the years, which you've already touched on. You've released "Poison the Well," uh, "Blinded by Fate." Can you delve into the themes and ideas explored in these songs and share any interesting uh, anecdotes related to their creation? <laughs> um. For, well, blinded by fate about uh, about Star Wars. And, yes, uh, yes, you it. fucking legends. <laughs> I love oh, Star Wars. Fucking John, I don't, if you listen back to it, um, the guitar solo has like a tiny bit of. I don't want to get sued off Disney here, but uh, it's got a tiny bit of inspiration from Jewel of Fates, uh, doesn't it, Johnny? Probably can't hear that, but still. <laughs> Sounds like a bit, bit like a ukulele over this, like, but right, right, right now we need like, I need like, a, I need like a little clip that says, uh, I think George Lucas is gonna sue somebody. <laughs> but that's awesome, that's isn't it? That's absolutely awesome. I, I didn't even notice that. I will be honest with you, but that is absolutely brilliant. The last few um, notes of the solo. Next time you hear it, you'll not. I, I will. I will. Uh, to be fair, we we just played it as well just before we came live as well, so I'll, I'll definitely play it again after this and uh what about poison the well uh poison the well mm. was... about, wait wait can, can, wait, where's can it, we even where's... say the country it's about a communist country that has ccp in the title <laughs> so just say the country then johnny <laughs> no, no, they might they might they might, they might cancel us. <laughs> Just to go, just to clarify, going forward, any statements made by Johnny Stern are not reflective <laughs> of of the band. Too late, mate. Which, which we actually joked about saying before. One, one. <laughs> no, in, 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 in in all seriousness, um, it is basically about if you imagine a, a country that has a a bit of an authoritarian um kind of regime where the the monitor everything and control everything uh, through the media. Um and and other means. That's basically all it's about, really. Yeah. So one uh, one of your notable tracks, which is my personal favorite by yourselves, is uh, "Obsession." Um, can you discuss the story behind the song and its significance within your di- discography? So Ali walks in the rain for a bit. <laughs> I've I've ripped off Sanitarium um, and then Ali put some mint vocals on top of it. (laughs) Not pretty much. That's all you need to know. It's it's a good, it is a good song, I think. Um, But because it's a bit of a slow one, when we're playing gigs, it's like we've got quite a lot of heavy tunes. If you plonk that slap bang in the middle, sometimes it's a bit like, ah. like I don't know if it's. I think people think like it was tread for like ten minutes afterwards. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I really dig it. It's my, like I say, it's my personal favorite bias. I do really genuinely like it though. Like it's a bit, it's a nicer, more melodic one. Um, but yeah, like it depends on the venue sometimes and how long we're set is. Like if we've got a longer set, then sometimes we chuck it in. Um, and if we're doing a Newcastle gig. Um, we, we, we might chuck it in um but uh i, I don't know i'll just like it because it's a, it shows like a slightly different side to uh oh. to what we can do kind of thing um it's just one of those songs that was that ended up being quite good um but it was still in the sort of infancy of when i first joined um so we we're still trying to work out a lot of like we were recording processes and how we'd go about doing things so in some ways it's a shame it wasn't written now because i think it would be um a, a, like a, a, a lot better in, in the best line wouldn't be but... as good like <laughs> <laughs> yeah isaac did lay down some he did he did stick mostly to what i was playing but he did lay down this the second verse was like a nice bass line leading into the chorus and it was that was that the song that uh was written during COVID? yeah yeah that was one of the one of the two wasn't it yeah, because I think we did struck yeah, from yeah. existence um, with uh, with one of your old producers, and then we did obsession with Sam Turbot, didn't we? And that was yeah, quite a step yeah, up yeah, in terms did. of uh, production. 
Um, so yeah, it was yeah one of the two lockdown tunes. Yeah. Um, how did how how was COVID for you? Surviving COVID. See, you've been going for ten years roughly. Um, how was it? Because it seemed to be a lot of struggle for a lot of bands. I don't really remember it, to be honest. <laughs> it just <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> to be fair, you came out of it a hunk or a drunk, and I definitely came out drunk. That <laughs> was weird, because um, I, I worked for the, well, I did at the time anyway, I worked for the NHS. So I had to, like, go to work every day anyway. But it was, like, weird going into town. and. Northumberland Street being dead and like nobody on it at all like normally when it's like even busy at the time I would go to work normally it was a bit like fucking 28 days later it was weird yeah um <laughs> but uh but it, like I was kept busy because I had work so I don't know if I sort of noticed it quite as much <laughs> but a lot of people had like a mid chill time off getting pissed every day like Corey I was on no, well I still work you still work I was, I was, I was <laughs> I was, I, was working, I was working shifts at the time, so I was doing like I was having like four and six off, and then like having some prolonged time off. That's all right because so, you don't work anyway. You do fuck out. <laughs> you sit in your van all day on your fucking iPad. <laughs> oh, it's getting pissed. Off. Oh, it is like. Fucking. I up. think. Uh... I remember we watched a. a we got a pup. And I uh, watched Game of Thrones. It's about as much I remember. Yeah, I, I did get a puppy in lockdown, didn't you? I forgot about that. Two thousand six hundred pounds from Kent. He was. <laughs> Don't call him that. I must have been a canny. Tr- like. <laughs> must have been a canny trick. Oh yeah, especially when uh, my last said to me, "Should we get the dog?" Uh, and the day before, like uh, about ten o'clock, the night before, we were in the pub smashing in pints, and I was like, <laughs> "No." In fairness. The same year, I did drive down to Kent for a guitar. So I was gonna say the real question is, would you trade, <laughs> would you trade Yogi the dog for a Gibson Les Paul standard? No, no, he's <laughs> a fucking drummer. So, uh, what guitar did you he... buy? Guitars, Johnny, with like animals that you <laughs> keep. Johnny, 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 Johnny trays like Joe Exotic behind the shop. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a store room out the back. It's like you give us something like some high value <laughs> animal. I'll trade you one tiger for a Gibson. <laughs> Johnny Exotic over there. <laughs> <laughs> Married to two men at once. <laughs> well. What uh, what kind of guitar did you travel down to Kent for? Uh, it was a LTD T two hundred, so that red one behind the telly. Aye, I, 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 I can I can see it, mate. Aye, it's, it's very nice. I can see it. <laughs> it was uh, it was the guitarist of the hardcore band First Blood, American right. hardcore band, but the guitarist lived in England, so right. went down and traded it for my seven string. Nice. Never, never really played it. No. Something to do. A 14 hour round trip. <laughs> did you actually buy it off him personally or did it was it like Yeah. Oh nice one. So you got to meet him. Nice fella. Nice fella. I can't enough. I didn't even know it was him to be fair. I just when I got to his house I was like, I recognise you. <laughs> Aye, sure enough. Just custom pick up and I've I seen you on Crime Watch. <laughs> 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 I didn't know. Oh, he's at Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's why I had to travel all the way down there to show his face. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, getting back on topic. So, how has your sound evolved since the formation of Trend Killed? Uh, are there any specific influences, musical or otherwise, that have played a significant role in shaping your music over the years? Mm. TSD alcohol condom- consumption <laughs> that definitely helped. That's influenced a lot. I don't know, right, Johnny, your your, from... your guitar playing styles changed a little bit. I'd say, Johnny. Yeah, it's less from like sounding like copies. Of, I think we're starting to have our own sort of uh, sound, whereas we used to pretty much rip off songs like, oh, let's make a song like Metal Militia. Well, let's, or... let's just clarify one thing: you used to rip off. <laughs> 
songs. We no, uh, right, right. If you don't rip off a song, it just comes out shit. Well, mm-hmm. there's only twelve notes. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, what band today is not ripping off another band? It's a, well, it's impossible now. It'd be fair. It, it is. It it is. Yeah, it's absolutely cool. unreal. You know, it, it it's hard not to sound like another band. And you'll yeah, always you always get that one per like, oh they're just trying to be Pantera. Oh they're just trying to be I remember when Trivium came out. It was like, oh they're just trying to be Metallica. Who gives a fuck? They sound brilliant. Does it sound good? Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I think it sounds good, doesn't it? Exactly, mate. Exactly. Uh I've lost where I am now. There we go. Uh so yeah. Apart from alcohol, what else do you think has influenced yourselves? One well, a personal note for each is who's been your main inspiration band wise for yourselves? What made you get into this whole thing? We'll start with you, Johnny. How are you, Johnny? We'll come with you first. <clears throat> well, when, when I started, to be honest, though, so Corey showed me how to fret a note on a guitar. Right. And then I went and I got, like, there was a lesson, like, after school, at, like, it was like year seven. And I was, um, so I was like, Teach me how to play like Slash, and then she was like, "Here's Wonderwall." So I did that lesson, and then I didn't go back. <laughs> and then I realised it was going to take quite a bit longer to uh, play like Slash than I expected. But um, and then I found like Megadeth and Metallica and Pantera and all them. And biggest uh, influence probably is is Dimebag, which is obviously. But I also like uh, Jason Becker and like Marty Freeman and. Anything to be honest, any, any sort of music. There's like, especially because I work in a guitar shop, and uh, um, even just like the guys that come in, it's like, oh, he's got a, a, a spicy lick, and I just like watch what they're playing, and I'll, I'll pitch that. Nice. Um, as far as music goes, I like, I'm, I'm like, it always comes out a bit metallica or a bit pantera because it's how much I like listened to it when I was younger. But we're not really, well, I'm not aiming to make like, like just cow and copies. It just, it just comes out a bit like that. But I'll put, I'll put anything in. It, it doesn't have to be a specific formula just uh but if it needs a bit of country like flat picking can i put some flat picking in if you're like gonna a bit of classical put a bit of classical if you want it to just be fucking punk yeah whatever, whatever it takes that's not exactly a bad thing though to be honest with you though uh johnny uh, those songs i absolutely love anyway um and, and to be fair it's one of the reasons why trend killed is probably one of my and I'm not just saying this come talking to you, but you you guys are generally one of my top favourite bands because you just always put on a cracking show. Uh, yourself, Johnny, uh, you're just a born showman when you play that guitar. Um, just... Oh, it's 30 minutes of freedom when, you, when you're... Yeah, the, just... You're free. Wow. Yeah. That's also called bombs. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely helps. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, honestly, uh, it's not a bad thing. I absolutely adore what you guys do. Um... I mean, but you, you, you hear a lot of like bands that like we'll all listen to, like Metallica. You can definitely hear like their influences. Yeah, you know what I mean. But then after they've released so much music, they kind of turn into their own thing, don't they? Of course, of course. What about yourself, Alistair? What's uh, what's influencing yourself? Um. Well, I've sort of got into like at least like music and guitar playing in general um, from listening to Megadeth when I was younger um so i really liked dave mustaine's like rhythm guitar playing his lead guitar playing really like marty friedman um guitar playing as well um but i I went through a bit of a metal (laughs) elitist phase when i was like 15 where like anything that wasn't thrash and death metal was shit and that was that was yeah yeah we've all been there mate we've all been there we've all been there yeah um and uh, I used to absolutely like hate Trivium. Um, oh, really? Trivium became one of my favorite bands, probably all my favorite band. Um, but like, I, I really like old school sort of like metal, but I like a lot of the modern stuff now as well. Like, I re- one of my favorite bands is probably Silosis. Um, nice, nice. And uh, I think we're really starting to kind of blend those two eras together almost to like take the best bits of it and and kind of combine them um which is which is refreshing for me personally um but yeah probably about it yeah is that one of the reasons why you you shred that beautiful jackson behind you as well for the the dave mustaine absolutely i wish i could play it as well (laughs) (laughs) 
Nice. Absolute, uh, he is an absolute legend, to be fair, like uh, David Mustaine. He's one of my favourite guitar players as well. Uh, moving on, Jordan, because you've been relatively quiet throughout this interview so far. Oh, well, what's been your in- what's been your influences? Uh, well, I've always been into heavy metal. Like my parents are heavy metal fans, so I grew up around it. And then when I was younger, I used to go to my grandma's, and me, my uncle used to play guitar upstairs. And I heard it, and I was like, "Fucking hell, that's cool! I want to do that." So got a guitar for my tenth birthday, and then. Like you say, music taste has changed. It was, I was the same as Ali, elitist. If it wasn't Metallica, I wasn't interested. Yeah. And then I got into me punk and then got into blues and just fucking everything. And then uh, here we are. No? Yeah. What, what, story, but it's <laughs> what uh, when you say blues, what, ki- what kind of uh, blues musicians? So I love Joe Bonamassa. And even down the rock, yeah, stuff like ZZ Top, early ZZ Top, fucking absolutely love it. BB nice. King as well, just nice, very classic Gales. blues players. Eric Guy, Eric Gales, nice. Showed me the other day, fucking amazing. Nice. Um, not so much blue. Uh, would you consider Gary Moore? Do you like a bit of Gary Moore? Yeah, yeah. Right. Would he? Would, is he considered like blues? Mm. Yeah, I would say he's blues. Huh? Yeah. I mean, now I, I mean. Last year, I went to two country festivals, so I'm big into my country music as well. Likewise, likewise. Um, uh, definitely check out, uh, I don't know if you've heard them, Blue Saracino. Um, absolutely, mm. absolutely insane guitar player. Um, if you check out, he's uh, not not to be the same with another Dark Justice, but if you go on the Dark Justice uh, country album... <laughs> If you, if you, isn't Dark Justice like a like a non-sting group or something? Uh, they are, yes, uh, they they are, yes. Uh, but it's uh, there's a Dark Justice album. Basically, it's like dark country music. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, definitely worth a check out. And like, so Blue Saracino was on there, and just uh, an absolute unreal guitar player. If you haven't heard of him, I highly recommend that you check him out. Mm, I've heard of him. I'll I'll definitely listen to some more. Nice. And uh, Corey, what about yourself? What's been your influences? Uh, to be fair, growing up, like my uh, my dad was always like had metal on, so it was always like Metallica, like he was proper into like his new metal, so it was like Limp Bizkit and all that stuff and Corn. So I was pretty much just brought brought up with it, and my uh, granddad's like a massive Thin Lizzy fan. Um, so it's just always been around, and then. Like growing up, you know, you start to listen to went through the metal elitist phase, as everyone does. But uh you know, you just start you just start to like realise there's other kinds of music. Like personally, I listen to a lot of like alternative metal, like Deftones, Gojira, um, Sepultura, a lot of like the kind of non the mainstream metal. I mean, don't get me wrong, like I love like Pantera, Metallica, Megadeth, all the big four and everything. But uh, yeah, it's just all about finding something different at the moment. Mm. Trying to try and listen to something a bit different and expand your creativity. Yeah, some excellent uh, choices there, lads. Uh, where we're so, as you know, Newcastle has had a, a, a vibrant music scene. How do you feel being part of it has influenced your music and career as a band? Well, it's definitely like our stomping ground. Yeah, definitely. I think I think because there's actually quite a few decent bands from Newcastle, it's you you can tell it like affects the turnout. Like people actually want to go out to gigs a little bit more often. Whereas you go some other places sometimes and you you don't necessarily see as many good bands in one place and then you find that those places are a bit more quiet. Um I think there's a nice community between all the bands as well. Like they all seem to support each other for the most part. Um, and uh, it's nice seeing some of the bands from the area start to pick up and do well Um, and I definitely think um, just word of mouth for us in particular in Newcastle um, it seemed to have done us a lot of good just in terms of like gig turnouts as well so so it's a good place to to start doing music in I think if you're thinking about being in a band definitely sorry mate there's someone at the door with two minutes oh (laughs) Again, not disgraceful. Tipple, yeah. I, uh, sorry. Tipple's not coming back. 
Uh, up with it. He's, he's, he's kind of been cuffed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice one. But, uh, yeah, like, like you just touched on there before, um, Newcastle, it, it, and a lot of people it's tend to forget. Yeah, definitely. Couldn't agree more, Corey. Couldn't agree more. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of bands seem to forget the Newcastle area, especially like when it comes to tours and stuff. They'll just completely bypass us. Um, they'll go straight to Scotland and then they'll back down uh, like the London South area. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. literally, it literally is heartbreaking. The closest up north they normally come is like Manchester and that's it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's weird because when bands do come here, especially if it's for the first time, they always comment on how good the crowds were. Like, I went to Trivium not that long ago. I was there. It was, uh, it was absolutely fucking bouncing in there that night, like. Definitely. Yeah, uh, you, don't, you, you don't get that everywhere, like. Uh, the, the people who took over the academy, which is now known as the NX, have done a fantastic job with that sound. The, the layout is fantastic. It's got a nice little balcony upstairs now for people. Um, and just the sound is in is just unreal. Uh, it was meant like. Back in 2022, I saw Electric Callboy there, and that was hands down my favorite gig of 2022. Just the sound, yeah, the energy like. on the that just absolutely yeah, insane. Absolutely um, but yeah, just that that night was fantastic, and then got to see Trivium there. Uh, I, I think we bumped in each other, uh, yeah, Alistair. Yeah, I, um, I because uh, me, me wife was at the toilet, and you were, I think you and uh, your pal was going to the toilet as well, but um, yeah. Uh, again, there's not many metal bands that's coming to the NX. That I think, apart from Electric Callboy and Trivium, they're the only two I've seen so far. Yeah, um, I think that they, they seem to be like reserving them for like bands and artists of a certain caliber. But it would be nice to see more uh, more metal bands on there, like for sure. Definitely, definitely. Trend kill on there one day. Your sound coming through that system would be epic. <laughs> oh God, could you, could you imagine my guitar being like that loud? It's me, and not good there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it make my ears bleed. I think it's been list one then, lads. We'll Def- have to, uh, we'll definitely have to get that sorted. <laughs> definitely, I-, I would love to see it. Me, uh, just your sound and coming through that PA system would be absolutely brilliant. But uh, like I say, yeah, a lot of bands do tend to forget the Newcastle area, and we have got a rich, you know, um, venom. You know, came from here. The whole extreme metal band was pretty much like, the whole extreme metal genre was pretty much started. Wait, wait, Kiara in the tune. Wait, 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 wait. Go on, go on, just, go. just to plug Venom. Go on. Um, we're we're supporting Abaddon, uh, which is Venom's original drummer. That's correct. We're supporting his, his band Abaddon on is it twenty fourth of Feb. Yeah, it's a Saturday. It's a Saturday, like at the end of Feb, anyway. But we're we're doing, we're, we're supporting Abaddon. Big up Tony and, and, and Hoggett. Everyone loves Hoggett. Nice. Nice. We we sat down with uh, Tony Dolan, who replaced uh, Conrad as vocalist uh, and bass player uh, back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, And I did name drop Trendkill to him, and he was quite well aware he is. (laughs) So, oh well, that's good to know. Yeah, I mean, that, that's assuming he doesn't think we're absolutely shit. Which is didn't get probably fair enough. Didn't get that vibe from. Oh, yeah, that shit band that keeps playing gigs around here. <laughs> <laughs> but that's 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 big. Have you played with Abaddon before? Is this going to be the first time? Uh, uh, first first time. time. Well, first time uh, since I've been in. Nice. Yeah, first time. I did. I liked how they advertised the gig on Facebook. As we are playing at Trillions uh, with uh, Trendkill. Uh, by the way, out of these nine pieces of toast that are all cooked at slightly different levels, which one would you uh, most like? And they had lots of people commenting and interacting on it. And I was thinking, well, now it seems like that it's just a post about toast, but that one post got more engagement than any of the shit we post on Facebook. So. Maybe we're going wrong. Uh, maybe he's maybe he's there. Likewise, mate. Maybe that's what we should start doing. Start posting about toast. <laughs> How to get more engagement. Why, 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 do we, why do we bring a, a like a, a toaster to gigs and then and then make toast in front of everyone? Lick the toast and sell it for a tenner a piece. A tenner? Do you think we get a tenner for it? Like, five. well, five. mate, you've got, you've got you've got to cover your overheads for the price of loaf at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. Fucking Lur Park. We're on the Dan Park, yeah, man. Yeah, the <laughs> North Park. What? You know, it's funny. Every time I go to my nana's, they've got fucking Lur Park. So I just smash loads of fucking toast in. <laughs> just like, I don't, <laughs> I don't <laughs> get the stuff at home, do I? <laughs> Oh, I love this. Oh, I love the Lurpak. Oh, man. Where it's called Truffle is, is anti Lurpak. Because uh, uh, if you recall from Get Heavy Fest, uh, our good friend uh, Ormi was walking around with a tub of Lurpak for the entire year. <laughs> if you can recall, I don't know how pissed you were that time, by the way, Johnny, but yes, right after Collapse of Colour, he. By the way, Johnny. <laughs> 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 no, no pack is superior anyway. Well, <laughs> yeah. So Ormi got on stage after Collapse of Color, uh, get heavy fest, and basically did like a little speech <laughs> saying how this a kilogram of lure pack costs more than a ticket for get heavy fest, and uh, he basically got everyone to scream "fuck you, lure pack." The worst thing is if you've got a kilo mm. of lurp pack and a five on you. I'm gonna like somebody's gonna mug you for the lurp pack. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what kind of world we live in now. Do you know what's funny though? Uh, be, be, before the the we went live, like we'll start with mortal chains. He literally sent his wife out to go and find a kilogram of lurp pack, and it can't be anything else. It has to be lurp pack. Um, so yeah, we're gonna take we're gonna take that clip. We're gonna send it to Norpak and see if we can get sponsored for Forget Heavy Fest twenty twenty four. I don't know if you know, but like in Germany in like the Second World War, like they're like hyperinflating money, weren't they? So like money became worthless to the point where people were getting robbed for the wheelbarrows the money were in. <laughs> really? That is what that is what world we live in now. <laughs> but for low park I love it I love it in drunk history with Corey Bennett <laughs> <laughs> I watch that shit they were literally they were burning money because it was cheaper than wood have you ever thought about just doing a YouTube channel like a history YouTube channel Corey <laughs> <laughs> there is actually a program called drunk history have you ever seen it oh I'm not no yeah. it's fucking you it's isn't it <laughs> I was just about to say it's a, it's a Corey actually, it's my show don't upload it anywhere <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's a bunch of comedians just getting wrecked and doing history. It's fucking, it's great. It's like 20, 25 gigs of fucking videos on your computer, which is you talking. <laughs> <laughs> is this where you get your history knowledge from? From the, the two these comedians who are getting constantly pissed? No, no, I just make it up. <laughs> no, I just make it up. <laughs> All of my facts come from fucking Bird Kirsch, I like. <laughs> 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 oh dear me getting off topic <laughs> uh, can we talk about any upcoming projects or collaborations that fans can look forward to in the future and uh, what can you what can we expect from Trendkill moving forward we've got some stuff in the pipeline but I don't think anyone should look forward to it well, I'll look forward to it. Prepare yourself is what I would is the word, the phrase I'd use. I'm Prepare pre- yourself. Don't expect much. <laughs> Make sure you've got that that block button on Facebook armed and ready. Oh, which other platforms prefer to use? In, in, in all seriousness, last, it's better than the last stuff, but not that good. So. <laughs> No, in, in, all, in all seriousness, I've, I think it's it's very good, and I, I think people will yeah will uh, will, will like it. Um, and we've also got a, we've got a cheeky one off cover coming out as well. And that'll be coming Ooh. out relatively soon. I, I will let know what the cover's called. Hey, that's a that's a fucking exclusive. People didn't even know it was a cover. Well, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, we? we've got we do we do have a we do have a main release that'll be coming out. Um, that's probably as much as I'll say on that, and we do have a cover coming out. Um, so oh, I can't, um, I can't, I can't say what it is yeah. just yet. But the Venga, uh, the Venga Boys cover, isn't it? It is a Venga Boys. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is, and it's actually, um, it's just me and Corey singing and nothing else. Is it exactly? We did yeah. record, we did record Johnny, but we just, we just didn't use it. Yeah. No. no like Jason well. used to it on oh, just as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here because yeah. <laughs> I, I have nice, nice, like, nice looking guitars. So, like, it's it's basically, basically it's a full album of covers from High School Musical One. 
Oh, that's the best one, though. That's the best one. It absolutely is, and you're fucking right. You know what I mean? Get your head in the game, lad. (laughs) (laughs) We're all in this together. When can we expect... (laughs) Oh, fuck me. When can we expect this release to be out? Well, Trend Hill are famous for setting dates to release things and... Not sticking to it. Sticking to them. So I would say in the next wait, wait. year. We'll <laughs> stick point. it out. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll put it out tomorrow in return for a hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> All right. Sounds like well, a deal. If 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 Can anyone you, was willing you? to do that, that'll be the day I take twenty five percent of that and do Johnny. this and Johnny, you're, Johnny, you're I'll do it for a hundred pound. A, you're not you're not doing a very good Doctor Evil at the moment. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I have a sonic screwdriver somewhere. Anyway, uh, ten thousand. Ten thousand. Well, there you I go. You, you, you heard it. Ten, ten grand. It will release our Everything. our next our next release. So gone. Um, in, in all seriousness, because we just. If you give me shit, ten grand, it, I'll it probably, start it, calling an account number. It probably <laughs> will be in the next few months. You, right. You'll hear. Something. But I think we're gonna have it this year. That's up. Well, we can oh, confirm that. Yeah, we'll definitely not, be this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the recording's done. The recording's done. The video's done for the single. Single. Uh, two videos. Two videos. Oh, two videos. You, oh, you've given the exclusives left, right, and centre here, boys. Well, why? It's not like he's gonna remember. Listen, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is recorded, <laughs> mate. <laughs> the stream remembers. <laughs> <laughs> This is recorded. This has gone up on YouTube after this, mate. No, every, every... It's not just... <laughs> it's not like you said what songs they are, though. So, yes, you've got two videos in the... That is true. That is true. Yeah. You haven't... You haven't... Exactly. Mystique Leftover. Yes, you haven't told her what songs they are. I'm sure there's over anything we've done before. I wouldn't yeah. say that. I think yeah, it's the best stuff that we're churning out at the minute, like... Bye. Nice one. I definitely cannot wait. No. Definitely cannot wait now. And it's it's more like we were saying before, but we're going into our sound. It's it's more our sound. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And is that going to be a full EP as well? Well, will there be a full EP this year? We, we can't tell you. You can't tell. You can't tell us about it. No comment. <laughs> we don't know. We we've, can't remember. <laughs> we've given you too. We've given you too, too much shit. There's two videos. That's all you're gonna know. Stop asking. No. <laughs> Who said two? Jordan. He said two. He said two. Exact. It had on. Let's pause. Let's pause this. Re- like rewind. Let's pause this. Rewind. Who said it? Now, to be fair, both of our fans will be buzzing. <laughs> I'm happy. I've been acknowledged as one of the top fans. Are we? we can end this uh, interview on that, I think. <laughs> no. Uh, what has been... So, what has been your most memorable live performance to date and what made it special for you as a band? Me, personally, was at Trillions on St. Patrick's Day when, in between songs, I downed a pint of Guinness. That, you did. that, that was also... Good. That was, that was also my favourite because I snapped the headstock off my guitar and then and then I played yeah, the last one. And <laughs> also, that was the one where I fucked up session up. That was a good gig. <laughs> yeah, a lot happened to me. A, a lot happened in that tour. I think it was the only gig where Corey's drums didn't fucking fall mm. apart like they normally do. Yeah. Hey, no, I, think I, I did I enjoyed uh, well, Get well, Heavy as well. Because I was... I know, get Heavy when was I, good. I get Heavy, I was really, really ill. And I... I didn't really, I wasn't going to get into it. That's why I kept my hat on for the start of it. And then I was just really, everyone in the crowd was enjoying it. It, it sounded good. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely sounded brilliant. Was, yeah. Lost, lost Society for me. I think that Ooh, was, yeah. it was, it was, it was, I was absolutely good at that. I missed that show. <laughs> you know, it, do you know what? It was, it was, it came like what, with five days notice? And we just got asked, oh, do you reckon you can shift a few tickets before? Um, before the date, we were like, well, fuck it, yeah, like, it's lost society, they're fucking sick. Um, I was really looking forward to that until they've crammed me in a corner 
Uh, <laughs> <awesome. laughs> that was so yeah, funny. It was like it's a fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 hello, kit. hello, kitty drum kit in the corner. <laughs> The, the worst it, says lot, it says a lot when Corey can't fit in that corner. Like he's fucking tight. It does. It does. Yeah. To be fair, if I was that like I, could, I was that tight. I had to move all my symbols around. I couldn't even use half of them. You couldn't I, even get the china in, could you? I couldn't even get in. I, 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 I want to finish to get I, in the back. Can I just say a mission statement for Trenkill? We're going to get bigger than Lost Society, and we're going to put them in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> 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 wow. Just yeah, waiting for uh, no one. No one puts Lost Society in the corner. Lost Society. Yeah, yeah. No one puts Lost Society in the corner. Johnny, they're just they. They were just about to ask us to go on two of them. because they're obviously all watching this this stream right now. They are. They are. <laughs> they, should, they, should they should listen. They should listen to to my words. They are, they are going on the dump <laughs> and like they can do the best performance they like ever, and uh, we'll pay them whatever respectfully and all that, but. They're going on the dunce kit. I'll will I'll, I'll tag the band. Comments on this on this stream as well on the other screen. They're fucking hilarious. Oh, <laughs> Mate, what's what said? N nobody puts trend kill in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> but also, someone said it. Someone said it. They've uh, studied Nazi Germany, and and Corey was in like every picture. That makes sense. Right. I mean, he probably it's was. really small in the corner. That, that, that's actually my... Uh, Jordan, that's actually my wife who said no one puts trend kill in the corner. <laughs> 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 oh, excellent. <coughs> oh. Uh, so, uh, as potentially... Uh, as primarily a groove metal band, what uh, what do you feel sets trend kill apart from other artists within the genre? How do you uh, ensure your music stands out and resonates with listeners? We're actually playing. It's, it's actually us playing. <laughs> and that's about it, really. <laughs> I, I think... Um... I think because we all do have like quite varied influences, but we also like the same things for the most part. I think we're like... Well, obviously, like groove metal, we like stuff that has a bit of groove in it. Like, I know, like one thing, um, um, my missus has said a few times is like, you listen to like a lot of metal bands, but you can actually like you can dance to like trend kill, and I think that is like the groove kind of side to a music. Like, it is a, it, it does make you want to get going a little bit more. Um, but I think more recently, we're kind of keeping that as a strong element of the music, but then we're also incorporating some like other influences. And I think that's kind of helps you keep it fresh a bit more. Who's got a dog? <laughs> yeah, yeah. dog just ran in there. <laughs> Any, anyone else want to comment on that? Or just, are you all happy with Alice? What Alice, you said? I think, uh... There's there is a few bands going at the minute that's obviously got groove elements in them. Um, obviously, namely one of the biggest ones at the minute being Malevolence. But oh, yeah. I don't think that I've heard. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think I've heard anyone which is as groove strong as us. If that makes sense, mm. it's got a probably a 90s groove metal vibe, and that's sort of the main part. It's just. It's kind so of refreshing. Got enough difference. There's not many people doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's just got enough little bits of different spice here and there to make it like slightly more interesting. I think, especially from the from the Newcastle area. Anyway, he's, he's definitely uh, the only band that I know that does that because uh, Equidum they're, they're more thrash based, aren't they? They go more like Exodus yeah. style than Groove. Um, mm. But yeah, it's definitely one of the only bands that I know in the Newcastle area that does that. We just wanted to pick a genre that no one else plays so that we can be both the best and worst band of that genre in Newcastle. Tiffle, can you put that top off or is that like so you're taking the shades off for some shades underneath? <laughs> I'm so I, I just noticed, I was like, if you just took a top off and you've got another one underneath. <laughs> it's like Halo like 1 where he takes off his helmet and another helmet underneath. <laughs> so... Finally, what advice would you give to any aspiring musicians trying to break into the industry and make a name for themselves based on your own experience in Trendkill? Don't, don't. 
Dawn <laughs> Fucking Dawn Bother. Quit one in my head. All four of us say the fucking same thing as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, honestly, I think that I think the main thing is right with 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 being in a band, particularly when you play metal, is that you have to be consistent with what you do. Peaks and troughs don't um, aren't aren't going to sort mm-hmm. of help you gain momentum. You just want to go out, gig as much as possible, and make sure you're making yourself look professional online. And then I think as long as you're working hard and doing what you need to do, it should take care of itself really but just such an oversaturated market these days man like you got to do if you want to actually do it as well you've got to be all in you can't yeah exactly exactly from anything it's it does get to a point where it's shit and you end up losing fucking loads of money and all sorts of other shit but if it's what you want to do you've got to be in for it like yeah you can get you can get it to a point where it pays for itself and we're we've broken through to that just about now. We've, we're doing all right with t-shirt sales and stuff, but like for a long time, it is literally just you hemorrhage a bit of money to get to where you need to be. And then once you've kind of gotten so far, then it's it's not quite as difficult. But the main thing is is getting out gigging as much as possible. And sometimes the experience doing that is how you improve more so than like practicing in a practice room every week yeah, yeah, you get a lot tighter when you're on the road yeah definitely yeah yeah but that's that's the love though do you know what i mean that the, the that's the... The is when you got you got to realize like when when people go into bands i think it's like all oh, fine but a lot of shit goes wrong like we finished our uk tour for the last five hundred <laughs> feet at 500 <laughs> crammed in and we all jokingly said, "Oh, it won't be a Fiat 500." Joking, and then the guy rocked up the Fiat 500. And we're like, "No, no, it was even worse." Cause, like Tipper was like, "Oh, I, I bet they give us a bloody Ford Fiesta or something." He was like, no, he, he said, I, sw- "I swear, we said like a yeah. Fiat 5 because we were on tour." Tipper's clutch went in his yeah in his car, and you literally there's a video on YouTube of you I'm, I'm driving it. down, saying, "Oh, imagine if the oh, fucking God. car, imagine if the car breaks down on the way down." Yeah. And then literally the car broke down while we're on tour. Um is I've got a Monday. No, no, he, he does something like, oh the gearbox feels a bit off. Oh, like, oh, better, yeah, better the off went, and then the clutch went down and didn't come back up. But Shit. the guy said I was gonna get a like for like vehicle. They were, I've got a Mondeo estate. <laughs> so they said like oh focus the state or something. I was like, Yeah, that's fine. We can we can finish the tour on that. And fucking rocks up in a Fiat five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. How oh, did you? Fucking oh, it was like we had to like basically cram everything in, but ditch loads of stuff. At, I was just uh, about to say, how the yeah, fuck like, did you get everything in a five BH yeah, five hundred? With a brain. Find the video, and I will so fucking show you. Basically, it was crammed to the point where I was in the back with Johnny. And there was like loads of shit between us, and I just saw this little hand come over the canister every now and then over the gear. It was just like it was like like delivering me like like little cans of Stella to keep it going. <laughs> I definitely thought there's no point wearing a seatbelt because if we if we crash, I'm wedged in anywhere, so I'm not going anywhere. Uh, yeah, there's nothing more metal than being in a Fiat 500 doing a tour. A little white, a little white Fiat 500. <laughs> oh, that was shocking. Hybrid as well. It was eco friendly. The guy that, that, that dropped it off was absolutely buckles. Was he? <laughs> he, was like, he was like, so you've been on tour, you had a Ford Mondeo, and they've sent you this, and all four of you have got to fit in that with your gear. We're like, yeah. And he was like, bro. <laughs> he was shit himself first, because I just, I was like, is this it? He was like, yeah, yeah. And I just fucking laughed in his face. <laughs> he was shit himself. They just had them three scrambling out the house to go and see. Going, oh, what we got? What we got? Pissing myself off and honestly, fucking it, hell. It, it was more fucking with it. it was, I've had it 350 mile in it. <laughs> it's shit. I remember once we, uh, we, were, we were trapped, we we're like playing like somewhere in the lakes and the rain was that heavy. And I think like the wipers aren't equipped for it. You literally remember it was like you literally couldn't see for like yeah. 10 miles. I had, to, I had to stop and do like 20 mile hour on the fucking motorway. <laughs> yes, but I had to go on from. Stoke to Whitehaven and then fucking back to Ashton. It was a fucking nightmare. Ashton? Nice. You're in my neck of the woods, eh, mate? Aye. Aye. 
Uh, well, just outside, in between Ashton and I'm not going to dox myself, so I'll just say in between, just between Ashton and Bedlam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm in Bedlam, and you're in your in Ashen, aren't you? Uh, uh, what? Well, you're you're in Bedlam, are you? Uh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Hey, uh, I I've knew that you could have just done the interview from here, mate. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I didn't know you were that close. <clears throat> nice one. Where's Where's uh, Johnny fucked off? Is he been Nick New? <laughs> Probably you'll, you'll be going to cut and grab something to show you. Oh, All right, Johnny. Johnny comes and goes yeah. just like the thoughts in his brain. We'll just end the stream now while, while he's gone. Oh, <laughs> oh he's back. Uh, we won't. We won't. We won't talk about you, Johnny. Don't worry. The worst no, thing okay. is, I can guarantee it's just that they're waiting for someone to ask. So <laughs> you know, yeah, I'll just crouch below the camera just in case, uh, like you forgot about me. Just talk about uh, yourself. Like the will. The, the will mention us. The will mention us. <laughs> And I'll stand up. I'll stand up, and everyone will see me, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what can I say? <laughs> well, that's well, the well, that's the well. end of uh, my questions. Anyway, well, now we're going to turn it over to everyone who's watching live. For everyone who is watching live, please use the channel. Please use the channel redemption points. Otherwise, your question will not be answered. Uh, and while we'll wait for people to type, what's your guilty pleasures, lads? Go on, Tipple, you go first, mate. I don't have any guilty pleasures because I'm I'm proud of what I listen to. I just, I just like my just... favorite band of all time is Westlife. My my man will. My, do you love Taylor Swift? My man will absolutely love you. You know that. I love Cher. I went to see Cher a couple of years ago. Is she, still, does she still, does she still look the same as she did in the 80s? Yes. And answer to your next question, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. Uh, I, did, I did notice you had a lot of shares exercise DVDs over at your house, Tibble. I don't fucking exercise. That's a bad, that's a bad point. Exactly, so what are they used for? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Outed. Um, Anyone else? I, like uh, I, I fucking love Abba. You love Abba? I like, I like. I have to say. What it is, like, I just, I, I, I am, um, weirdly enough, like, growing up, I was always like, I, I always liked Abba, but I always used to watch, like, Mamma Mia with my fucking nana. We used to get wrecked and watch Mamma Mia. And ever since then, like, I just fucking, <laughs> just love it. <laughs> love as, as soon as Amazon, I'm like, that's yes. such a lovely Light story. Time. Oh, me and Actually, me and I used to just get fucking blitzed and watched fucking yeah. massive. Oh, yeah, and you Westlife did snowball, fucking... Snowballs uh, when I was like uh, a kid. What's your favourite album? Um, I'm pretty money. Watch them say fucking Dancing Queen or some shit. No, it's a good one, though. It, I mean, it is, but... <laughs> so you can't you can't get, a, like, a favourite album song. They're all just the best. To be fair, Banger. Like, that's what that one's the best. I like fucking proper A's pop me like Frankie goes to Hollywood and Duran Duran and shit like that. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, I was listening to Toto or do like Toto fucking Bella. Oh Toto, that's not guilty though. I think no. probably it's actually, the thing like you you just like you like what you like, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, All right, Johnny. One of, the, one of the weirdest ones, probably like old fucking like nineties rap. Yeah, shit. Uh, what's that? Um, bear, 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 oh, fucking bear, Frank Star. I don't know. Frank Star. I can't remember the name of it. Jurassic 5. Jurassic 5 is sick. When you said 90s rap, I was going to think of like the old gangster style stuff, like NWA. Like, on it. On oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's lean. Uh, Biggie Smalls, Run the Tupac. I love Randy MC. Randy MC is sick. 80s, eh, man? Yeah, uh, yeah, late late eighties, early nineties. That's that's my type of rap that I'm into. Yeah, but we've got a couple of questions. Are you ready? No. Oh, First one, Grim Door. Uh, how does the band like their toast? <laughs> uh, number seven. Question. Number seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I think, I think, I mean, you, need, the you need the picture for context, Johnny. Yeah, but they might not have seen the Abaddon post. I definitely ah. say like well well 
anything anything less than crunchy just it's fucking bread still i'm a but, bit of a freak i like it basically just past the point of bread about about 20 percent really like. about 20 percent before charcoal when does bread become toast though when it becomes hard. Now, like. we are getting philosophical if you have hard bread it, it's stale it's fucked it, it, it depends what it's with oh you've got a baguette <clears throat> well I, th I think when it's when it's sort of s just starting to brown off a little bit like in the middle and it's hot and it's it's crispy all over the top that that'll do me fine the question like, is though do you do you put your butter on when it's cooled down a little bit or do you let your butter melt in because that's Take that's what makes it there we go Six. if you can so, see what, what, what if, if we can see jordan Seven. I think seven, me personally. Like, See, I'm, I'm a two. Five. Someone's got evidence. I'm between four and five, me. You're a two. I'm a two. Two. I'll say so I'm I think it depends what it's with it. Yeah, if you pour some, like, some fucking water and flour in your mouth, you fucking. Who are a three? No, I think, I think <laughs> if you're having like, like, I don't have it often, but if you're just having toast and butter on its own, and it needs to be really fucking crispy. But if you're having it with like maybe bacon or, or sausages or something, then maybe it could be less crispy. No, no because the other no, way around. You, do, you, do, John, you, you put the butter on where it's hot, so it makes the bread like sort of soft on the inside, and then the sausage is nice. And put some mustard on. Why is this the most in-depth conversation we've had? <laughs> because yeah. this is what we're actually <laughs> <talking about. laughs> Fuck toast. Fuck toast kill. <laughs> that better that that better be a song. After this. I'm getting dark justice on you. <laughs> <laughs> that, to be fair, that, that read, that, they're in Jordan's house. They're waiting for him to finish this interview. They let him... That's what the knock was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, mate. We've got this. I'm already, I'm already on a live stream. Give us a second. <laughs> all right, all right. Let us finish this interview. And... Wait. <laughs> uh, so, Trickle Truffle... Uh, what would be the flavour of a limited edition trend kill pot noodle? Oh, oh, all right. Question. Well, I've tried those noodle. Nagashima hot chicken pot noodle things. It would be just one of them. Or Stella. I was about to say Stella. Yeah. No, it's got to be a proper good noodle. A Stella flavoured pot noodle. No, it's going to shit on a soy sauce as well. I've no I, idea. I, I, I'm just, trying to... I just want to... I would, I would sort of agree with Tipple and say brown ale, but the, also the taste of like poor choices. Why would you want? Why would you want a beer flavored fucking noodle? It would just I taste like crap. It, That's what the trend kill flavor would be. <laughs> it, it is. No, we, we are all piss heads in this band, so you need. To get to it. <laughs> I, I am not. I, you I, especially. I, you're the worst. Fuck off, Johnny. Me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I can contest to this. I have seen Tranquil many times, and, and yeah, Get Heavy is one of them. <laughs> Johnny piss. There we go. We've got we've got outside confirmation. That there we go. Is, is is the piss head of the band. I I, I am like sober most nights. Most nights, at least ninety percent of nights. Other than when I'm off the deck there, or when I've got to. Be social and so every like every day ending with a Y. I like how you've got a fucking beer in one hand and a sonic screwdriver <laughs> in the other. Just to just to reiterate your point. <laughs> Honestly, lads, I'm not pissed. I just need to fix this stuff. I just need to go back in time somewhere. <laughs> Johnny, after this, Johnny's gonna get in his wardrobe the TARDIS. I would I will triplicate the flammability <laughs> of this fucking with Stella. And then you <laughs> green bastards do fart, everyone will be gone. There we go. How much is a, much is a ticket to your brain? <laughs> <laughs> so Thrash Thrashaholic has just stated Johnny, I kept you off the stage by holding up a brown ale. That sounds about right. Yeah. That fucking metal of the masses. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, no, that was in between the bands. Oh, I was just going to jump on the mic and be like, vote us, and then we lost, because I didn't, yeah, didn't let yeah, do that. Yeah, you know, you said you did jump that and say anyway. I'm going to assume that that is Danny. Yes, it I is. It, 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 it is, yeah. I, I, was, I was just going to jump on it and be like, oh, remember that we're the only band to vote for. Like, 
I can't apparently, remember when. Apparently from Danny Hughes and him, he likes 69s a lot. <laughs> Which, good old Danny. He loves a, loves a good 69. <laughs> and thrash. The ultimate, the ultimate question that every band in the UK gets asked, what's your Greg's order? Sausage, bean and cheese melt and a steak bake. Can I tell you my exact Greg's order a day for lunch? Yes. It was a southern fried chicken baguette and Milk. a steak bake and a sausage bean melt and some prawn cocktail crisps and a bottle of Fanta. You fat bastard. And it was fucking glorious. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> uh, not like body shaming, Jordan. <laughs> I, I quite enjoy the fact that they sell... Um... Uh, like fried chicken, so just copious amounts of fried chicken and uh, some pasties, like, like whatever pasties are all nice. You know, you know what it is? I like how your Greg's order was fried chicken, like that's oh, just right. something you walk in. No, to get no, you know, the cheese, you know the cheese and bacon roll thing they do. That is next level. Oh, that is good. Eh? It's too expensive. It's like one pound sixty. I used to go and get the uh, you know the southern fried chicken baguette. Yeah, but I don't know what it is at the moment. I I think the machine in red car is fucked because the chicken's always cold. It's fucking so the forgot. Yeah. Play the meter. Are you still aggressive in red car? Yeah, unfortunately. They've got electricity in red car. <laughs> it's, it's, wow. It's called, it's called that's, it's, that's all of our red car. Uh, that's a candle so, in the background. Ham and cheese gone. toast. They still use coal in red car, do they? <laughs> we still, we still, um, was it Greg's with a Z? It's like you, know, you ever played Resident Evil Four where they all go to the church. It's, that's what it's like. <laughs> oh shit! One, one of the guys in the comments is from Red Car. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're out, you're out, Red Car yeah. off with, with you're, now. you're outnumbered now, you stupid fucking Newcastle caveman. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's, there's three of you. Oh my goodness! <laughs> three of you. So you fuck. You do realize <laughs> my wife. One of my moderators is here. They're from the tune, so it's three on three, really. We're gonna get if we're getting if we're gonna fucking get technical with this. <laughs> I have a strike. I have a stripey guitar, so like that's that's like a bit Newcastle. It's like the, it's like the, the oh yeah. So he has there, he has you protesting about us, and you're one who's got a black and white fucking guitar. So what you're saying, Johnny, is we all just want to be Geordie. <laughs> I would say it's a Geordie guitar for, for stealth purposes. Nice. Has anyone actually watched the, the Greg's documentary on Netflix? I'm curious. No, but I've seen it yesterday and I really want to. I haven't got... I would like there is what's, it, what's in your Greg's... Uh, what basically what's in your Greg's documentary it's on Netflix? Two episodes, uh, limited, like yeah, a. I'll have a, look. I'll have a look at that. I'm gonna have to what's give it a watch. Netflix? Yeah, it's on Netflix. I limit like limited series, two episodes or something. Ali's gonna be pulling it like a chimp tonight. <laughs> oh, honestly, lights <laughs> off, candles on. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> what, do, what what do you think's happening after this stream, mate? <laughs> what's, 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 Watch me roll this sausage on live stream. A lukewarm <laughs> steak bake, that's all, Ali. Now that uh, Ali lives close by, I'm going to his after this. <laughs> I've got a steak Ali, bake in the microwave. Keep this pretty one, I want to see. <laughs> you nice. just sat in the other part of the garage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. uh, well, so, uh, Sir Metalhead, uh, if you could be any age for the rest of your life, which would you choose? Age. Age. How old? I don't know. Uh, another four years. That maybe. Mm. I'd, uh, no, 150, no. so I could just be a burden to everybody. That <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm just so decrepit and rancid. You fucking are, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. exactly. Uh, I'll, I'll stay where I'm at. <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'd stay where I'm at because I'm. Uh, I want. I want to. I want to. I want to get like. Like fucking hench as fuck, and then stay stay at that point. So four years, four years. <laughs> get, get the start the fucking timer, boys. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny's, in, Johnny's, Johnny. Johnny's in the next Olympics. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll grab people who, who boo in the audience, and I'll crush their head with my hand. <laughs> 
Mr. Red it Car. would be funny to see you just massive, like <laughs> Tyson Fury massive. Wow. Like like just like fat, fat, fat as fuck. And <laughs> yeah, just fat as fuck. Don't get shredded. Just really <laughs> fucking obese. overweight. Morbidly obese. And then we'll start calling you Chinny instead of Johnny. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll put some we'll put some tights on Johnny and we'll uh, what? start the band. Where's the going? <laughs> I bow. I bow to no man. I've heard otherwise, Johnny. <laughs> uh, oh God, Dubson. Um, Dubs, he's basically asking Johnny. Uh, do a little jig for the boys in Equinum. Oh, get up, Johnny! Um, I don't know about a jig, but oh, Johnny! Well, I don't know which one it is. Right, the the, the, the guitar player. The, the I think it's Dubson. It is. Where's your guitar? Dro- drop it off. I'm meant to be setting up his guitar. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do a jig once I set your guitar up. The man oh, asked for a jig on the live stream. Yes, I think the least you can do is is provide a nice jig for him. <laughs> oh yeah, Johnny. Come doing? on! Never let him. Die. Yeah, that's all. Let's go. Let's go big. Uh, let's go. <laughs> that's, a, that's a diet jig at, at best. <laughs> yeah, we're putting old fat man. That, that, that's put some. That, that's the kind of jig you do when you like try and leave the room. Put some effort into it. Go on, get up and twerk. <laughs> I'm not doing such a thing. I'm turning on extreme battery. I'm turning on extreme battery there. Slot drop for the boys. Uh, Grimdor's asked... I'll, sp- I'll tell you one thing. Fuck, what's on? on. Equitum, itchy ban. What? What? I don't know. I think it's anyway, itchy ban. Itchy what? Ban. what are you talking about? It means number one, I think. You think? It means... <laughs> I hope it doesn't mean something else. Well, Doobson, get what Doobson can, you, can you clarify <laughs> what's he talking about? We often ask ourselves the same question <laughs> re- regularly, usually once a week at band practice when we see Johnny. What are you talking about? What, what, is, it, what is he talking about? It's a good question. We'll get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Open your mind. <laughs> Explain. What are you Open saying? Your mind and you will see all. Are you caught in Quattro from fucking Total Recall? <laughs> uh, yeah, he is. I. <laughs> he is. I. Open your mind. Grimdoor's asked for the follow up. So, have you guys had a proper Palmo yet? Or Palmo then? Mate, we're from we're from Teesside. Well, us two are. The other two are from Fairyland. Now, I did go to a fucking burger festival in town not that long ago. Well, I say not that long ago, in the summer. And I had a van from Borough that was selling Palmos, and I got one, and it was pretty fucking nice like I'll um, look at that. Like, my, was that Palmarama by any chance it fucking was it literally uh, was I, I remember I, I tried a fucking Palmo up in Newcastle a Palmo and it was just a fucking bit of fried chicken with some shit melted cheese on it it was like it was like the where did you <laughs> where did you go for it though <laughs> where did you go for it Johnny <laughs> where did you where did you go for this shit Palmo in Newcastle? To be fair, I was in Peter Lee, but like, Newcastle. So it wasn't even fucking Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to play him the tune, and you weren't even there. Fucking you hell! Fucking have Peter Lee. It's the same difference, isn't it? Peter Lee. No, it's not. <laughs> that was the time. I want to discuss before this street before it went live. Anything out of the time you were Magum, right? The time bridge. That's it. So technically, you're all just from Peter Lee, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like how the two most passionate discussions on this call was about toast and palmos. That's all we really care. I was gonna say, it's got um, man, man Johnny's in the in the tune. They did pretty good chicken palmo. Not very far from uh, the NX. So if you can check that out, to be fair, I don't think I could smash in a palmo and then go to a gig. Oh, mate, I've done it before, and it was brutal. I was just so, uh, my, honestly, just... just like, like somebody's like, oh my just, god, I've got somebody like, overdosed in the corner, it's like, no, I'm just in a food. It was, getting, it was getting to that point where I was getting ready to overdose on Rennies, just constantly chewing Rennies. Just chewing. <laughs> it was really bad. Yeah, not doing that again. Uh, Doobson's asking, why aren't Trenkill doing Metal to the Masses? 
Because it's fixed. It's we're, in the, 20, we're in the fucking election. It's fixed. It's, it's fixed. fixed. Oh. fixed. Oh. We're in the huff because we got to the final and we didn't win. It's a, it's, it's a crap of shit. Nah, it's, <laughs> that's all right. How you really feel? To be oh, honest, like, to, to be perfectly honest, it, it, it's, it's good. Right, it's, it's really good gigs. It's, it's a good opportunity to play to big audiences, but it's a big fucking waste of time if you don't get there because like you, you have to turn down other gigs, and it's like we've done it before. And, and to be honest, I don't know if like 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 the, the last gig we did, um, the final, like we we got Drew first. And I had fucking worked out there, so I got there with, like with about five minutes notice. I had to hop on the stage and just start playing, and it was just like, like we, 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 we it didn't look didn't like you were having a PTSD episode. I was, uh, I was, I was at that final. I was at that final. Where were you, Corey? Out of curiosity, you weren't at that final. Where were you, Corey? Where were you? Why don't you tell everybody where you were? I knew this had happened. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I I was uh, a bit silly and um... you were fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't actually realize I was waiting like till like all the dates came out and I was like, all oh, right, well, there's nothing going on this time. So I booked a holiday and I uh, took my last to uh, Greece. Proposed. Way not worth it. Uh, it Congrats. Really <laughs> because all the lads were like, "Fuck you, die." <laughs> wow, well, you're paraphrasing a bit. Not I just really. said die. <laughs> <laughs> wow, just, just clarify. That's so dark. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I booked, I booked a holiday accidentally. Can we shout out to Whiteman? No, he looked at what that was five minutes notice. You say yeah, that yeah. like a middle-aged woman ordering shit on though. eBay in the middle of the night. Like you accidentally booked a holiday. I think you're fine. You booked a holiday. Because you didn't check to see when the fucking final was, you silly bastard. All right, Dad. Well, <laughs> well I had a better job for the final, anyways. Who, who, to be fair. who, what, who was, who was in the? You don't need me. I'm a stand-in for Jack. It was, yeah, it was it was Jack, Jack White. doesn't want to do yeah. ninety-nine point nine percent of the gigs <laughs> that we do, so Corey does them as his depth. <laughs> yeah, it was Jack, Jack White that filled in. He used to be in a band with me and Ali. Uh, right. He's filled in for Venom as well. Like nice. Headlining festivals around the world, not so. Nice. I it took him took him five days to learn the set. So five days. Mental, to be fair, I'm like still, like like, like honestly, five days. It was it was ridiculous. I'm still, that's oh, a, that's like, impressive. I had, I had, like I like like Jack and he was fucking awesome. I I drove up to Newcastle from Redcar every single night after work for five days straight just for us to fucking get drawn first and lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's why we're not doing metal masses. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. But to be fair, with your your skills and talents, anyway, who knows? Yeah, you, they'll might discover you down the line, and maybe just get asked to just play on your own merits without having to go down that. Uh... They might ask. Fair, I right. think if we played if we played metal of the masses as well, we'd have to turn down like paid gigs in town around that area because mm. obviously you didn't want to be paying playing two gigs in a week in the same place. It's just. To be fair, you never know because Bloodstock might contact us and ask us to like work security or like clean the toilets. So mm. you know, we'll keep we'll keep our options open. Yeah, <laughs> not a bad idea. I'm just close it as a guest, just to be like, I'll pay you, I'll pay you like three hundred quid if I can camp in your field for a few days and watch some band. I think that's, after, that's after what a lot of people do. Sort of a whole <laughs> point of it. Last year, I don't, I'll be getting invited back. <laughs> Uh, Any final more questions for Trent Kills? Anyone who's watching live? Anything? No? On silent. When does it end? <laughs> <laughs> well, lads, uh, anything that uh, you want to plug before we, we call it a night? What, uh, uh, any gigs you've got coming up? Out releases uh, wise? we we're we're only just starting to book gigs in um for this this year, but we do have that one on the twenty fourth of February at Trillions, uh Sport in Abaddon. And we've also just booked a headline gig on Saturday, the second of March in Berwick at the Barrels. So we're nice. looking forward to that. Looks like a pretty cool venue. Um 
and Alf, our manager, is working away in the background trying to organise uh, some tours and other dates as well. So you've got some again. Got some again. April as well, haven't you? We've got April as well. Probably. I don't know. Don't you don't know about April, do you? Not know, it. I must just. I, I, I operate on a on a month by month basis, so <laughs> April doesn't exist to me. What the hell's happening in April? It must be your manager who I know because uh, we asked if you were able to play a show for us in uh, April. Oh shit! Yeah, we did. <laughs> 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 Forget. Do we, do we agree? No, he didn't. Tell us to, he tells us to fuck not? off. No, he tells us to fuck off. Uh, <laughs> no, it sounds like him. No, I did no, not. No, I t- no, gigs. <laughs> <laughs> no. To be fair, I, I totally understand where he was coming from at the end of the day. So, nah, it's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. It I'll is what it is. Of, I'll do a set of Metallica covers. I oh, we'll, we'll take that. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, they just be me and what just uh, just come on stage and do a jig, a proper jig, not like that half ass attempt you just done before. Not that wasn't even fucking diet. Sure, like that. that was great. That was great. That. No. <laughs> that was like only like f- like free only fans content. <laughs> Want to see the premium shit? Subscribe only for more. Fans. Why don't we make an only fans? Well, well, I'll tell you what. You start it. And when it starts to get a bit of traction, we'll come and we'll come and join our. Who's actually going to pay to come to a gigs before we can fucking sign? <laughs> come and join our only beards, Johnny. <laughs> you'll have to you you you'd, you'd have to go a bigger you have to go a bigger beard like. It's not yet, but it's what what plan on it. This covers up my chin. You should ask Ali about his amazing beard. Yeah, my amazing beard is, right, is that I'm uh, 30 years old this year and I can't fucking grow a <laughs> I was just about to ask, Ali, what's your uh, what's your beard routine? Um, it's waking up. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> I'm fucking Benjamin Button, apparently, and I'm bereft of all. The worst thing, the worst thing is Benjamin. Apparently. Benjamin Button, like, start old. Like, you're, like, just young forever. Yeah, maybe. Peter Pan. We've got Peter Pan I mean, singing. What I would say is we've got a T-shirt that we... That, got a real uh, boy. That we've just had printed. Um, that has a picture of a woman on it uh, screaming. <laughs> and about six people at different gigs have come up to us and said, oh, is that you on the T-shirt? I was like, oh, well, th- thank you for your lovely comment. It's actually a woman. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with being actually, a woman. Um, think- but I am not one. Um as Thinking I'll, about I'll, it, Ali, like were, you, were you bit by a vampire at 15? Uh, no, just um, just dodgy Mike down the alleyway that one time. <laughs> no, only because they don't age. That's a different age. story. Listen, I don't know if you're, like, you're like still 15. I have looked about 12 for about 18 years. So, Do you, Can you see your own reflection in a mirror? <laughs> <laughs> I can, to be fair. Can you? I then can. you're not a vampire. I'm not. I think I'm just a. I'm just a boy. <laughs> I'm just a boy. Just know who he is. Do you still get ID'd yeah. when you enter trillions and stuff like that? Uh, In fitness, a I do occasionally get ID'd. Corey got ID'd for some scissors and Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be fair, he is about fucking three foot eight. So I don't know, but it's like you do uh, have a, you have a proper man beard. <laughs> to be fair. It would be an unfortunate oh. attack of puberty if a child had your face and beard. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, if you were that small, beard. your beard would look good. To be honest, yeah, you're probably right. Maybe maybe that's it. I've grown too tall, so the, the follicles can't come out my face. You just need to squat me down a bit like you're Corey. Slowly getting out of up, like... That must be it. I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, I'll concentrate, right? And then the next time we do an interview, I'll, 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 if I really concentrate, I might have grown a beard. If you then. squeezed it hard, it would like Peter Griffin played or hair. It'll come out your face. mind. It's useful, useful advice. <laughs> my, my wife's just said that uh, she got idea, ID for paracetamol. If, if it fucking happens, I think some people just love the power, to be honest. You think? I got ID'd recently. I can't remember what for. I, like I, I got ID'd. I started doing a normal shop. I just had like a few cans just for through the week. 
And I just laughed in her face and I was like, oh yeah, sure. She was like, no, no, I need to see your ID. I was like, you're fucking joking. It's <laughs> like in the middle of summer, all I had fucking had a vest on, looked like this. I was like, are you actually taking the fucking piss? And fuck you. <laughs> you love laughing at people's faces, you. <laughs> you fucking, <laughs> you horrible cunt. <laughs> it's, it's, it's policy. Anyone under 25 will have to ID until just <laughs> fair, like, like, aggressively <laughs> laughing in her face. <laughs> Bonus about being you like, seem like you, st- you still seem quite hurt by that tipple. I am. You are. You can tell. Was that last year? <laughs> I think it's time to let go now. Tipple's got a little black book of all the people that have wronged him. Oh really? <laughs> he, he's just biding his time. Uh, these three cunts until, are until he can until he can <laughs> write a <laughs> fucking Ali, Ali, Ali. <laughs> one like uh, What are you trying to say, Corey? I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> That thought has been and gone. <laughs> it's completely gone now. Fair enough. Fair enough. Anyway, lads, cheers very much for doing this. I've had an absolute belt tonight. It's been cracking laugh as always. Um, crack. Thanks for having us. <laughs> no worries whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, last chance to plug anything. What's going on? Two hours again. Shows. What? What? Quickly. What shows we got coming up? Pass. Fucking good question, that. Uh, Abaddon. We're playing. We're playing with, with, with the drummer from Venom originally. Him. Abaddon. Him. Right. That that guy. Remember that show. Tony Tony Bray from from Abaddon. Who is Abaddon? Yes. To be One fair, of... I think we've only got about three gigs booked in. I gave you two of them. Yes. <laughs> nice. Oh, I'm playing a band called and Beric. Oh, it's a Beric one. Oh, I Beric. Beric. We've got Beric, and we've got that Trills one. And... Yes. Beric Be- 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 sounds like quite interesting one. Yeah, I've played that before. Be They'll all be sick, because we someone, are Someone I work with has played there with his band, and he was saying, like, mind your heads, because it's a very low ceiling, apparently. Oh, really? Right. <laughs> no, I'm probably not. Expecting, expecting Johnny to snap At his first, when on. Ali commented that, I thought he was saying I was being big-headed because I was doing a headline <laughs> gig. <laughs> Hey, watch no, your no, head no. on the ceiling, you fucking big-headed cunt. <laughs> one, one of the lads I work with said the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So very much anyway, lads. It's been a been a cracking time. If I'm off, uh, I, I might uh, might travel down for that. Or up, should I say, for that Barrett gig. So yeah, if, man. Uh, I have to, to check me shifts at Graft. So. Yeah. Well, if you're not too far away, um, you'll have to uh, give me and Tipple a shout and we can do some Bedlin Ashton themed. Oh, nonsense. that sounds like a fucking cracking idea. That like, oh, yeah. just fucking. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna take my dogs and whack for whack under the perk. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man. Good old fucking Ashton lingo style. Jesus. Yeah, I'm actually gonna whip it downstairs now. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna take a dog for a whack. Nice one. Sweet. Yeah, nice. Tower attack. Tower attack. Yeah. Well, my, my, my telephonic device has 3% battery. <laughs> you know, it, was, uh, it was quite interesting teaching them two lads what a shovel is like. <laughs> really? Uh, oh, yeah. Grab a seat next to this shovel. Huh? <laughs> let's, never, let's never forget that night in the kitchen with Laura. <laughs> uh, my last brother was talking to him for ages and he's got a proper strong ash at an accent has he nice <laughs> he was talking for about now and <laughs> we just looked at Corey looked so fucking scared like you didn't catch a word that did he he was like no no I don't know now where I'm going but I, 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 I need, need to, to look after you home. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sort them out <laughs> nice well, once again, lads, cheers very much. Anyone who is watching live, please don't go anywhere because uh, once I've taken a, a quick 10 minute break, we'll be back spinning some tunes for you. And of course, we'll be playing some more Trend Kill and taking your lovely song requests. If you are free, lads, yeah, yeah. We're playing some tunes if you want to hang around with us for a little bit. If I, I, I have a request. Go on. I will do it. It's only on Bandcamp, it's on, on Spotify. It's on Bandcamp, not on Spotify, okay. Was right, uh, the, the champion 
But it's all this <laughs> fucking song, man. <laughs> what? Do you got, do you know, are you gonna have to play it because it's just? It's I can I can play it I can play it all the way through, but still, that's not that's just just play it. I just heard the champion by who though? The swordly conduct. The, the swordly conduct. Right. Yes, it's on Bandcamp. Remember that chat. Anyone who's watching live, remember that name and song for me, please, when I take a quick, quick break. off the first album, because it's a better version. Right. Hey, Rose. <laughs> remember that. We'll, we'll, ha- we'll have a look. You'll, you'll not regret it, to be fair. <laughs> is, there a, is, there a video, is there a video on YouTube, or is it just on Bandcamp? There is a video on YouTube. I'll put the, I'll put the video on. I'll you should put also the... put Ram Rancho on. Ram... Oh, fuck <laughs> off. No, no, no. <laughs> Get out, right? <laughs> Mate, we started this we started the stream two and a half years ago, and that's a couple of friends, that's all that would fucking request. That song is blacklisted from this channel. Oh, it, 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 that's some, like, it, it's just, it doesn't, doesn't hit right. <laughs> it's completely blacklisted. Oh, Johnny, your light's gone out. I know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch from my from my light to my phone charger. <laughs> otherwise, I will die on you. <laughs> well, we're finishing up anyway, so I'll have a bit of quick crack in the in the in the chat. So don't just uh, head off just yet. So everyone, hang around, and uh, we'll see you in a bit. Cheers again. Thanks, Tranquil. Appreciated, and uh, we'll see you soon. The light's gone out, yeah, but I still work. <laughs>